Hi everyone, my name is Tabitha and I welcome you to this session of Let's Learn. What we're going to be talking about today is lists. We'll go through an introduction of lists, we'll talk about our example business and how we're going to apply that to the list that we're talking about today. We'll introduce what they are, we'll talk about some best practices, we'll talk about everybody's favorite question, what is the difference between list versus tags? Then we'll jump into the platform. We'll demo all the lists that we have for our example business. I'll give you some next steps. And then in the event that you have any questions, you can absolutely let us know. So let's talk about our example business, Boone's Bandanas. Boone's Bandanas is an e-commerce business that sells products for dogs. They sell products like bandanas, harnesses, leashes, collars, all different things so that you can deck out your dog in the best gear. They also have an animal shelter side of their business. So they're really operating as an e-commerce business, but also as a nonprofit. For their nonprofit, what they do is they actually hold adoption events. And at those adoption events, they go to specific animal shelters that they highlight for a month. And we donate our bandana sales to that shelter for that event. So that all of these dogs that are looking to get adopted have on nice bandanas, they're looking ready for their new owners. So really operating two completely different aspects within one business. We're using automations, we're using the CRM, operating through forms to collect contact data and we also integrate with shopify so we're using a deep data integration to operate with um, shopify so boone is a real dog he is in fact my dog who i built this business around so let's go ahead and we're going to dive in to a couple things that will help us break down and understand lists before we go into the platform and actually see how it's set up so what are lists Lists are the fundamental ways in which you're communicating with your contacts. So if you're breaking down or trying to break down all of the different ways in which you can communicate with contacts, think about the broadest groups of your contacts. What are they? How are you talking to your different groups of contacts? It really is like the top tier form of customer or contact segmentation. There's a lot of best practices that you should imply when you are actually starting to think about your list strategy and the ways that you should be building out the list for your business. One of them is going to be your contacts should all live on a master list. Now, your master list is there not for you to necessarily use as a form of communication, but really giving you an opportunity to hold all of your contacts in one place. So you might have five lists that work for your business, but it'll be really important that you have a master list that holds everybody in one place in the event that maybe you have a company announcement or that you accidentally delete a list, but you then wanna make sure that you didn't delete those contacts. So very, very important to note. Also, contacts must be opted in to receive your marketing messages to be on a list. So it's really, really important to note that all of the contacts that live on your list must have actively opted in. When you purchased active campaign, and this kind of ties into our next best practice, you not only chose a plan tier, but you also chose a contact limit. And your active contacts are those who have chosen to opt in. So your active contacts are the ones that count towards your contact limit and you are not considered an active contact unless you are on a list. So it's really important that we include all of your contacts on lists as they opt in so that they can be messaged, so that you can start reaching out to them actively, and so that they can count towards your contact limit. Now, last but certainly not least, just to note, contacts can be on multiple lists. They don't need to be grouped into one specific list at any given time. They can be on any of your lists. There's a lot of people in Boone's Bandanas that are customers, but are also interested in our community, which are two of our lists. There's a lot of people that are interested in our newsletter and our animal shelter side of our business. We'll dive into that a little bit more when we go into the platform, but just know there's a lot of different things that you're breaking down when you're building your list. So it's really important to think about how people might, you know, go back and forth from one list to another. Now, 
what are the different things that you can use lists for? If you're starting to really think about your list strategy and all of the things that you can use your list for, one thing is prospects. You probably have a lot of prospects that you are vetting, that you're talking to, maybe you're giving them demos, and a good place for them to start is on your prospects list. Now, once they make a purchase, they can always move to your customers list. Your customers list is going to be a good place for all of the people that have made a purchase within your business. As an e-commerce store, our customer list is really important because we reach out to them with different sales. We reach out to them with new product releases because we hope that our original customers or the people who are currently our customers are going to essentially make a second purchase, hoping that they like Boone's Bandana's products. Newsletters is another good list that you can have because people might not be sure at one point what they're interested in in your business. They might just be, you know, visiting your website, starting to gather information in that awareness and consideration stage of your customer journey, and they're not really sure what they need from you yet. And newsletters is a good place to introduce them to your business and start to send them general information that you're sending to all of your contacts. Like we said, lists are really the broadest form of segmentation, and newsletters is going to be pretty broad because it allows you to just start to send your messaging to people based on the things that they're interested in or just sending general monthly newsletters. Product releases is really good, especially if you're a B2B business, because it gives you an opportunity to send updates to people based on maybe the products that they've purchased or the products that they're interested in. It gives you an opportunity to start to get in front of your contacts as you're releasing new things. Events is a common list that I see because it gives you not only the bandwidth to start to reach out to people based on the events that you might be hosting, but also allows you to reach out to people to get them to sign up for events, to get them interested in them, and maybe send them recaps of the events that you're hosting. It can be an online event like a webinar or um, an online sale. It can be an in-person event where you're giving, let's say, a talk or a webinar in person. There's a lot of different things that your events can revolve around. Maybe you're having an end of summer event where you're hosting a big adoption event where all these animal shelters can come together and it's really an opportunity for people to just you know, bring home some pets for their family. Last but certainly not least, language is a list where you have an opportunity to really bucket your contacts by the languages that they speak. And it gives you a really, really good opportunity to know exactly how you should be messaging specific contacts at specific times. You know, you might be sending them the same message, but you're definitely not sending it to them through the same language. So this will give you a really good way to start to bucket your contacts based on the things that they um, you know, identify with and the information that they're giving you about themselves. So you have a really good opportunity to start to take these six options or these six examples and start to strategize for the things that you might be building your list around. Now, lists are really important when you start to use segmentation, when you start to think about what that CXA language that you want to use, that customer experience automation language that you want to use. And like I said, lists are the broadest form of segmentation. They're that top tier form of how you're going to be segmenting your contacts. So here you can see that our lists are where we're going to start. As we break down to build a more specific segment, we'll get into our tags and our custom fields, but we wanna start with our lists. If we're sending an email or a campaign rather that tells our customers, hey, we have a sale right now on collars for female dogs. It's the end of summer. We didn't sell as many of these purple flowery ones as we thought we were going to. And we only want to reach out to customers regarding this because we want to start there, right? These are people that are already interested in our business. They're people that have already made a purchase. And we're hoping that if we send them a discount code, they'll make a second purchase. So we want to start building our segment with lists. 
So with that being said, let's go ahead, we'll dive into the platform, and we'll start to break down how Boone's Bandanas uses lists, how they've organized their system in a way that makes the most sense for their business. Let's go check it out. Okay, now that we're in the platform, what we want to do is we want to toggle over here to our left hand side of the platform and click on lists. This is really like your home base where you see all of those different options. That's where you'll really operate from to get to specific points of the platform. Here you can see that Boone has four lists and one master list. So as we talked about, Boone's Bandanas has our master list because that's the holding cell for all of our contacts. That's where everybody's gonna live in the event that we need to give some company announcement or that we accidentally delete one of these lists. So it's really important that we have this just as a backup in case something were to happen. Now let's talk about the four different lists that we have, how these are broad forms of communication and how they apply to our business. Like I said, our animal shelter side of our business is animal shelters that we communicate with that are interested in holding an adoption event in partnership with Boone's Bandanas. So it's really important that we use animal shelters as its own bucket of communication. Boone's monthly newsletter is just our general newsletter list. You may have subscribed to this as you were learning about us. You may have subscribed to this as you made a purchase and you decided, you know what, I just wanna hear some updates from Boone's Bandanas too. So think about your newsletter as like your general list where you're probably blasting out um, some kinds of campaigns on a regular cadence where you're communicating with these contacts, letting them know what's going on with your business. Our customers is just that, people who have made a purchase from our Shopify store, who maybe they've made one or two purchases, maybe they've made three or four, but they all live in this one list. We can get more specific on how many purchases they made with tags and custom fields, but again, we're keeping this very broad. Last but certainly not least is our dog community list. Our dog community list is people who are interested in learning about our community. We get more specific in the different things that we offer within the community and where it's actually hosted, but this is a really good opportunity for you to learn about where, you know, the newest dog beach is or where the newest place that you can bring your dog to, whether it be a brewery or a restaurant or some kind of, you know, cookie shop or anything like that. We also give you new recipes. We give you insight into indoor and outdoor activities. A lot of different things that were reflective not only of your area, but the things that you're interested in. Now, like I said, at any given time, you can be on any of these lists. You can be on one of them. You can be on all of them. It really just depends on the certain things that you're interested in within this business. If you were going to create a list from scratch, you could go ahead and add a list. You could type in your list name. Your list URL is going to be the website in which it's affiliated with this list. So for all of our lists besides customers, we use boonsbandanas.com. For our customers list, we're using our Shopify store because that's where people typically make our purchases. Now your list URL is a good reminder for a contact what the website in which this list is affiliated with. So if at any point in time I was managing my subscription, I could go to my list description that would say, hey, you subscribe to this list because you were interested in Boone's Bandanas. And if I'm like, what is Boone's Bandanas? I can use the list URL as a way to really go ahead and remind myself of what that actual business is. At any given time, if I want to see the contacts that are on this list, I can go ahead and view all. You can see it'll let you know active contacts that are on the list. And then if you toggle over here to this drop down, you're able to get into more advanced settings, create more segments, and make sure that you can set up text subscribes or anything like that. We'll get into this into the 201 version of list, but as you're getting set up and starting to learn your list strategy, this is a really good place to start. Let's talk about next steps. As part of the education team, it's really important that you sign up for office hours. Office hours are essentially an open forum with my teammate Shiv where you can come in, ask questions, and you don't necessarily have to attend a webinar of any sort, but you have an opportunity to just ask a question, have Shiv answer it live and demo it if needed. Our community is a great place for you to start building information and relationships with other customers, people that might be doing the same thing that you're doing with an active campaign. 
And our YouTube channel is where all of our videos are hosted, all of our webinars. There's a lot of different opportunity for you to educate yourself on all of the things that we offer within YouTube. So with that being said, thank you so much for attending this lesson of Let's Learn Lists. We hope you learned a ton and we hope you come back to our next video. Thanks so much. Hope to see you soon.